Oxford from the inside. The good, the bad, but always the truth. Hey guys, I'm Sime. Welcome to Oxford from the inside. The good, the bad, but always the truth. Uh, today we're joined by Janaid and Robin. Um, would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Janaid yeah. first. Uh, thank you. Hello, I am Janaid. Uh, you might know me from this channel, but, but I'm here today as a guest. Uh, I am going into my third year studying medicine at Trinity College, Oxford. And I'm Robin. I'm friends with Siam, but I'm also studying medicine at Manchester University and I'm going into my second year. So um, today we're talking about a uh, medicine degree, um, traditional versus problem-based learning. And some of you guys might out there, like me, might be like, what well, is traditional <laughs> and problem-based learning? Because I personally have no idea. Uh, so I guess we'll start with that. Um, uh, what is um, PBL, problem-based learning, and uh, traditional learning in medicine, guys? Yeah, so um, I guess medicine is one of those funny subjects where like, all the universities essentially get you to eventually do the same degree, right? Everyone's doing medicine, everyone's going on to be a doctor, but the way they teach medicine uh, differs. Uh, the two major, majorly different strands of teaching medicine are traditional and PBL problem-based learning, but you do also have uh, integrated, which is sort of a mix of the two. They uh, sort of pick and choose things. Um, and of course, each university will differ in themselves. So I think the ultimate best way to know what a university does is to go to their website or open day and check. But um, yeah, so today we'll be discussing um, traditional and PBL from Oxford's traditional point of view and Manchester's PBL point of view. So um, to begin with Oxford's um, traditional format of the course, uh, I think what it mainly comes down to is this idea that you have, um, it's a six year course, but you have the first three years um, as preclinical medicine and the second three years as clinical medicine. Um, you, I've heard Oxford tutors describe it as Oxford teaches you to be a scientist in the first three years and then a doctor in the second three years. So there's a real split between the preclinical and clinical information. Um, and also should be said that the third year is um, the intercalation year, which is basically where you sort of take a break from the main medicine degree to do a one year um, degree in medical sciences. And for that, you pick a range of topics to study and uh, write the exam on. But whatever topics you do, you end up with the same bachelor's degree in medical sciences. So at the end of the Oxford medicine degree, you have the medicine degree and you also have the bachelor's in medical science. So that's what happens in the third year. So it's sort of like another, um, it's a part of the preclinical medicine uh, three years, but it's sort of a, a opportunity to go deeper into like the academic side of science. But yeah, that's how, that's how the Oxford course is, is split up over the six years. Um. <clears throat> something like I remember hearing this so a little bit of rogue from today's topic but I've heard two things about uh, the medicine course is it true that if you wanted to after the three years you could leave with a BA and can you change course after the three years yes yeah, so, you... yeah so uh, I mean answering on behalf of Oxford of course uh, the preclinical and clinical schools are treated as two separate schools like you do you do technically reapply after finishing preclinical. It's not really a, a reapplication because a, a space is always guaranteed. Um, but that that's like how it's sort of considered. Uh, preclinical tutors and the clinical tutors are, are separate, um, and the 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 physical location of the schools are different. So so yeah, you could leave after the third year with that BA that you do in the third year, and do something else. You could take a break from education. You could study something else. Um, but you would then be able to, whenever you wanted, come back and complete the clinical portion of the studying and then get your medicine degree at the end of that. And you do have the option, I believe, to continue that in London, which is an opportunity um, that some, I think, I think a few, maybe one or two students do each year, but it's not that common. But you are able to sort of split apart where you do preclinical and clinical to some extent. Um, is that the case in Manchester, Robin, do you know, after the... No, so ours is five years straight through. So you, because it's PBL rather than traditional, it's not done as you do your science and then you do sort of the doctoring part of it. It's very much all the way through. You're being taught the medicine and the sort of clinical, sort of like um, consultation skills. And it's like immersed from the start to end. 
it's all very like medicine focused. There is um, the option so to intercalate. So instead of the Oxford where you have to intercalate, it's a choice you can take. So in third year, again, between third and fourth year, you can intercalate. And at Manchester, it doesn't, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have to be in anything related. Like you can take in anything. So some people might go like and do a humanities thing. Or you might, it's common to do sort of like, um, if you're going to do that, like more of a global health or something down that route and you'll get the BA again but that you can't stop part way in our course because it's the whole thing is linked so it's two years of pre-clinical and then three years clinical um and then you finish and you're graduated so that isn't and everything's done in the the first two years are done at the university and the three years are done in hospitals around Manchester but sort of feeding back to the uni still that makes sense. So it's a slightly less flexible, but on the intercalation, it's a bit more flexible. So you don't have to do an intercalation. If you want to become like, um, you just want to become a doctor as soon as possible, you can just do the five years straight yeah. or you can add in the one year. And intercalation is basically when you study something different. Yeah, like a, re so like a research year, I guess. So you pick something you want, are interested in. So say you like are really interested in like cancer or like a specific topic, you go like research about it. I think you do like a paper and then you get that other award. And when it comes to um, when you then decide where you want to work as a junior and you get like ranked, I think intercalation will give you more points. So you'll be higher up on that list. So it is an advantage. It makes you a bit more um, of like a good looking candidate, I guess when you finish but you don't have to do it it's, if you're interested in something about um how a course is structured in manchester so you said that it's two years um pre-clinical then three years clinical so then yeah. how is it how is pbl at manchester problem-based learning different to traditional because it sounds like you used to have your pre-clinical then clinical like how is it different yeah so in ours i feel like um, it's not our first two years aren't just science so although they're called preclinical we we're learning like diseases treatments um, conditions symptoms all as one so from like the first week I started I think we did like embryology but we also did like giving birth and like pregnancy so like it was we weren't just focusing on like science or like I feel like um, in the traditional courses correct me if I'm wrong but it's more so you're kind of working up so like small like molecules the science of it and then you sort of then apply your knowledge to um, actual patients, whereas we're throughout applying it to patients. So um, we do, it's like eight cases per term. So we'll have four weeks on and then one week off, which is where you sort of revise everything you learned. So there's no lectures or anything. And um, yes, yeah, so each, does that make sense? So it's done yeah. much more um, as if you're, a doctor almost because you'll come in and there'll be a patient they'll have their symptoms like what they came in you'll write up like treatment plans management for them um even though you might not have like a full grasp on the science behind it you sort of learn it as you go rather than first and then so our preclinical years are aren't just science you're learning everything but they're called preclinical because you're not in hospital right yeah and, and it really is um like you were saying actually robin the other way around <laughs> in a traditional course in that we um in some ways it's not very different to a level we have uh, like a syllabus which sort of just details all the um all the theory that we'll be going into which will include like biochemistry human physiology anatomy but we all learn it with um the intent of just understanding the science the clinical stuff uh, is touched on in lectures and Indeed, like lots of the um, tutors are actually doctors as well. So they always like to you know, include clinical cases and stories. But that is sort of extra to what's actually being tested, which is the actual like the theory behind all of it. Um, yeah, we don't we don't uh, have sort of patient oriented learning. It's more you learn all the theory and then then the extra stuff in the first two years, at least um, includes more clinical stuff. But like the, the idea is that you get the theory understood in the first two years and then and then you have the third year and then you spend the the last three years applying all of the applying all the stuff you've learned so it's, it's sort of a different way of dividing it up I, I guess 
yeah if it helps um to like understand it i was gonna say so the way if i just like give like a vague timetable of how we would have done it yeah. so on a monday you come in you're in groups of 12 so also pbr sounds for problem-based learning if that had been said so it's done through problems so that we'd come in and there'd be like it's like a page or so long and it'll be like okay so this person collapsed the um, paramedics came and this is what they saw they were taken to hospital this was like the initial diagnosis and then this was the treatment and then you all sit as a group kind of it's like vaguely similar to how you see on like a, a show when they're like a patient comes in they're all trying to like work out what's wrong because at the start none of us know anything and then we'll as a group like make a mind map make a big list of what could have happened and then for, so that's on the Monday and then the rest of the week you have lectures about that topic so like the pathophysiology okay. of it like why the symptoms um the action of that drug so you do like the whole case you will do um then the mode of action of the drugs like um normally there'll be something on like ethics like consent or something like that and then on the Friday you will come together and you sort of present so as a group there'll be so you're allocated at the start there's like a chair so someone who's in charge so a bit like I guess like Siam is now they'll ask the questions and the rest of us will all sit around and like discuss it like ask each other questions answer it so by the end of it in theory not exactly but like if someone then came in like um a pneumothorax or something I'd know from like top to bottom what to look for and how to treat it and then next week it's just a whole new topic right makes sense yeah. so it's very we don't just do like I haven't learned the science behind it before I've learned everything else you just do it all at once yeah and then running alongside that we'll have um anatomy and um clinical skills that's like seeing patients in real life as well but that's so I'll link it so the case if when we did cardiorespiratory we'd go to the cardiorespiratory wards on our placement so oh, yeah that sounds really interesting um with um how you would describe in PPL and I, I don't do obviously don't do medicine but um from what I know in how from friends who that and like usual aids that it's don't think it's like that in Oxford can you give us a rundown like a Monday to Friday a typical week at like uh, medicine would be like at Oxford yeah sure so I think go, I mean going along with the sort of cardiorespiratory theme um to give you an example of how we covered um that sort of physiology we had lectures specifically on the heart um starting from like the basics uh going into like 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 what is the heart what does it do going into like the electrics and stuff um and even going down to like the the molecular very small cell sort of things and we also had separate lectures on um respiratory physiology so that's to do with like the breathing and that was in first year and then in second year we had um applied versions of the same lectures where they integrated the two to bring like cardio and respiratory together so just to give you an idea like whereas robin uh, as she was just saying started with the patient and then when talking about the sort of cardiorespiratory things going to the ward, we broke it down very much the other way with lectures covering all of the stuff in cardio, the stuff in respiratory, and then second year um, having like applied lectures. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it is very different. Um, and the clinical cases, like I was saying, uh, stuff that sort of talked about for interest at the end, uh, rather than the stuff that you actually like primarily learn and primarily get assessed on. Um, as for like a typical week, uh, we, sort of have, um, there's different different sort of types of teaching that goes on at Oxford. Um, you have, I was saying before, you had a syllabus, you have the syllabus um, and the lectures that we get are designed to cover the whole syllabus. So that's, that can be quite intense, um, but uh, I mean, it's, it's your choice whether to go to each lecture or not, depending on, you know, how much you, you feel like you need to go to the lecture for that topic. But um, obviously going to the lectures is recommended and the lectures, uh, as I said, are designed to cover the whole syllabus. Then in addition to that, you have tutorials, which is the um, the Oxford sort of specific thing, although other, other universities will do it too now, um, where you go into uh, depth on a particular topic with um, your tutor, at, which will usually be at your college, um, who will also be an expert in that field. So it's an opportunity with um, to go into, in, go into detail about a topic with like two or three other students, or one or two students actually usually, um, but that won't be, you won't get the same, you won't get a tutorial for every topic of the course. So that's um, specific based on your college, based on what sort of things they like to give tutorials on. Um, so that's where you have like your written work that you'll do, you'll write an essay and then you'll have, you'll discuss that in the tutorial, whereas the lectures sort of cover everything more broadly. Um, 
and I think we'll go on to talking about exams a bit later, but um, I'll just mention this now because you do have, because like the predominant um, thing we're examined on are essays and it's you, you do essays for the tutorial, but the tutorials don't cover every subject. You do end up having to do some of your own reading as well in order to get like a proper full grasp of all the topics that are, that are taught. So, so there is that. Um, and that, that, yeah, that is really interesting. Um, how the course is taught in um, Oxford. I was wondering, Robin, do you also have to do essays um, as part of the PBL kind of teaching? Uh, no, so I don't have any any like ongoing monitoring at all. So because it's quite independent, so we don't have like tutorials or things like that. We just have the first PBL and then the closing session on the Friday, which is kind of very student moderated. So I guess you could all sit around not talking about it in theory. But there's no real, um, it's very independent. So so we'll have the opening, the closing. There's like about six to eight lectures in between. You always get like one day off for on the Thursday before. And then you'll have, um, I say, anatomy consultation skills and maybe like a couple histology lectures thrown in. But there's no monitoring at all. So you finish the week and then it's just like you move on and there's no ongoing monitoring you just have two exams like part of these through and they're not essays they're just like straight exams so I kind of like an a-level vibe I guess but it's just um you just like short revise answers and then learn. Or... yeah so it was it was like 250 multiple choice questions oh, okay yeah was the exam so it was like three hours and then it was just long um more choice but then that's only for first semester then after that it'll always be OSCEs I don't know if we'll come back okay. to that. Um, I don't know if you have OSCEs, but then from then on, so every semester will be an OSCE on the topic we've done and anatomy throughout. So you have to like keep remembering. Oh, um, cool. So I don't know if you want to talk about, but we did like the arm, reproductive, pelvis, uh, spine, like back muscles, all that kind of stuff. So that will carry across to next year. But um, oh, and all the heart, lungs, everything. Um, but the content is just for the exam following the semester. What, oh, okay. What's an OSCE? Pardon? What's an OSCE? So it's like an exam that's um, I don't know, like an interview kind of thing. So there's stations. There'll be eight stations. I think two will be anatomy. So you'll walk in and there's just like a pro section of like someone's could be like the pelvis with little flags sticking up out of it and they'll be like name that muscle name that nerve name the forearm like or and or it'll have questions like what innovates the carpi radialis or something i don't know and then um don't ask me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stuff or like yeah. where does the um tricep like insert and how, what does it innovate like that kind of thing that'll be two of the stations you'll just go in there's a man or a woman there and they'll just like ask you the questions and you just answer and then you come out so there's like you all rotate around you go in the next one and it might be like a guy he's like oh my chest hurts and then you have to examine him and say what you think's wrong because we do it quite like holistically like patient wise yeah so you are so then um that might be one it might be do a cardiorespiratory exam the next one might be just someone crying and then you have to like sit there and be like um like calm them down like ask them it's to do with like your consultation skills so, like um asking them like what they're in for what they're like struggling with like that kind of thing so you just do lots of those stations and they'll cover everything you've done and then i think you have to pass like 80 percent of them but it's done on like a standard deviation so that'll depend mm. on what you get so after you have the first multiple choice exams in the first semester it's all oscis that you do yeah, so I got my oh, exams okay. cancelled, but I would have right. had uh, OSCE on, so all the anatomy and then the cardiorespiratory topics, the heart and lungs. Um, apparently they get like people in who are like missing a lung or wow. like have a pacemaker yeah. and stuff. So yeah. you have to like, because we've done the stethoscope and everything, so you'll, it's quite, it's a bit like an MMI, I guess. Like, the, oh, you don't do MMIs, do you, Foxford? No, but no, multiple so million the, interviews, yeah. Yes, yeah, so the interview to yeah. Manchester is very similar to like the format of an OSCE where you go into station, just lots of stations. And then and I think yes. it's across two days. 
so that's super different to what we do um so we have our examination is like um half multiple choice questions um but that'll be like a like a separate exam for each of the like three modules that we do in a year and then we'll also have the essays um which again is a separate exam for each module and that's for both first and second year um we don't have any oscis um until clinical really? school so yeah so it's a huge it's a huge difference um and yeah so i think cause... we're not oh, examined sorry. on any any of that stuff we do have I, I will mention um just to you know just to 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 give oxford the credit of its of it of its one clinical thing that we do do in preclinical medicine um is the the what's called the patient and the doctor course which is essentially um a short course where we have two days a term where we go visit a local gp in oxford and we do um talk to some patients who visit the gp locally uh obviously that's very limited in sort of it's only like one or two patients and it depends on the gp that you go to but that's um that's what we have in preclinical for um sort of patient oriented sort of skills uh, but mm -hmm. yeah we're not examined on that like you are at manchester that's all saved for the clinical school yeah i think it's because every week we have two to three hours that's just dedicated to they'll have um actors so we go in so every tuesday i'd go um in my pbl group so the 12 of us you stick with the same group for everything and um we'd go in and there'd be actors so it might be like um first we we're just working on like introducing ourselves all of that and then it progressed through so we did sort of people if they have like terminal diseases or they're coming in for like checkups or um so yes yeah, so we do two to three hours every week of that so i guess that's why there's a lot of it in the exam and then placement wise we have it's not a ton but i think it was three gp and three hospital term maybe something like that it's not a ton but it's so when we have those i said three weeks on one week off in the one week off they might have a hospital visit in there as for uh, anatomy also because um you talked about it a bit uh, at Oxford. We, and um, I mean, in terms of being assessed on it, it's just assessed like everything else. So it'll be in, it'll be included in the multiple choice exam and even some essays as well. We do end up having some essays on anatomy. Uh, we have, um, I think it's one session a week in first year where, and also this continues into second year as well, where we go into the dissection room and we um, basically get to sort of test out our anatomy knowledge um, on the actual like, prosected so already dissected uh, specimen um but it's not like it's not quizzed it's just um it's just an opportunity to to practice it basically uh and um so we we do all of that in the first and second year but at the end of third year before joining clinical school we do get um a, a sort of refresher course on clinical anatomy which is considered to be like what you really need to know for the clinical school so they do um make sure that all the students are like back up to speed on the anatomy because i mean you can tell from listening to robin's schedule that obviously anatomy is very important in medicine um because it's a human body so uh yeah that's that's how that's how oxford sort of manages that um transition from preclinical to clinical school damn it sounds like there's so many differences it sounds like the courses are not even the same yeah <laughs> yeah i didn't realize low, that low key, yeah <laughs> Uh, um, for our, I think our anatomy is similar though, so it's, wait, how often yeah. did you say you did dissection? So that was um, once a week in, yeah, in first so, year. Yeah, so first and second year we have, it's like one three hour session. Yeah. So they release like a pack that you're meant to like learn throughout the week alongside the other stuff. Yeah, it's, and then it's you're... actually similar to that, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, then we come in and um, I think we, we uh, there's some pro sections, but we also do it. So each group of 12 will have a body that we cut up the <laughs> so like so we, um, yeah. yeah so and then so when we did cardiorespiratory again for an example mm. we'd um like cut through to take like the lungs out the heart out and it would like work alongside what we're doing but yeah once a week for that too how um how does the lab differ between you both or is it similar um if you want to go first Janice yeah so we have um we have labs uh which i think is different actually to robin i think you were mentioning um but yeah yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. uh so we have um i think it's an average of one uh once a week but it can it can vary uh where we basically just um 
just do uh, some sort of basic research methodology sort of stuff. So, um, which can be from like testing, like the effect of drugs on um, certain types of tissue or, or whatever, really. And it, it'll, it'll be sort of following um, the lecture course in that we practice stuff that we've, um, we've like heard about in the lecture. Uh, it's not really assessed to like we do have a, we do have a practical book that we need to um, complete, but it's not assessed in any sort of like rigorous way like other labs are at Oxford. So um, it's 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 quite chill and it's it's actually it ends up most of the time being a bit of fun just to um, practice the research skills. And I guess that comes back down to like what the course is trying to achieve. Like they they are very keen on the academic side of medicine at Oxford in that um, a lot of the lectures are based around like the latest papers there's a lot of um focus on being able to read papers and understand them and critique them uh and i guess the labs are just another extension of that they want to teach and um, the students about you know what what methodology is used in a lab and how you get the results and what sort of equipment is used and all that sort of stuff um yeah so it comes back down to like the training to be a scientist in three years sort of sort of vibe and robin like um, so we don't really have any labs as such, so we don't do like experiments and do methods or anything. Um, from second, so for my first semester I didn't have anything at all. Second semester we have something called Fizz Farm, but it's more like you kind of just test everything on yourself. So like, um, on yourself? we did Whoa. asthma, we'd like just use the inhaler, you'd like um, do the inhaler and like record how our heart rate changed, or we'd like induce Mars hypoxia and just see how it like affects us. So it's like, it's not, um, we don't write anything up about it or anything. It's just, um, I know like this next year, cause everyone always talks about it. We like inject um, some lidocaine into each other and stuff. It's like, you just use the stuff relative to the topic. So like lidocaine is like a local anesthetic. So um, you, it's, yeah, we don't really, it's not monitor anything. You just go in, in again, your PBL groups and, you'll do a little bit of the stuff to see how it works. So so when we, for example, the inhaler one, so we learn about asthma, we learn about how the inhaler will like um, open your airways and like change things. So then um, you'd have three people. One of us would use like a inhaler. Um, one would use like a nebulized inhaler. One would use a, and then we just record how it changed. It was more, it's more just a practical way to see how the drugs actually work that you learn about, but it's not in any way like scientific. If that makes sense. So it's not really labs. But it's done in a lab, and that was once a week in my second semester. So we've got a few minutes left. Um, I just wanted to, before we finish off, go through bullet point reasons of pros and cons for traditional and BPL. So um, Janine, do you want to go through? You know what I mean. Problem based learning. <laughs> Um, I was hoping that we would like brush past that. Based problem learning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <that's laughs> yeah. um, problem based learning. That's what I said. Um, anyways, it's not what I said. But Janaid, um what are the pros and cons for traditional learning? So, I, I mean, I guess uh, it's probably more like what you feel fits your, your style of learning best. I mean, of course, as an A-level student, you've only had one style of learning your whole life probably so I guess that's that's a little hard um, and you do have to sort of think forward a bit about like okay how would I feel if I you know saw a patient each week and it was completely different or how would I feel if I had lectures on each topic and then did clinical stuff um, but for me personally why I did end up choosing a traditional course um, was I liked the idea of getting all the theory out the way and um, the idea of feeling like I could understand like all of the human physiology in a similar way to how you sort of understand all of, or you try to understand all of biology a level and then um once that's done move on to just focusing my mind on like clinical skills and, and all of that stuff so I, I i guess i sort of liked how i split that up in my mind um i also felt like i learned well from lectures um just having someone sort of talk at you while you write stuff down and also the tutorial system i i like the idea of being able to discuss things with someone who is an expert in that field. It, they might not even be a doctor, but just hearing about like the re latest research and um, the, the sort of the questions that scientists are asking now about, about topics in medicine, it, I just find really cool. 
and also I, I do like the and I will say this this is probably the biggest thing um, if you are interested in or think you'll be interested in going into research at any point or, or you want to like you want to have quite a strong background in you know research and reading papers and understanding papers then I think the Oxford course is quite good for that because they they do have that sort of emphasis on that and then of course the whole third year is um, basically to give you a taste of what being a, a scientist is actually like uh, me personally, I didn't think that I would want to go into research really um, for before signing the Oxford course, but now I'm sort of more thinking that I might want to like mix up my clinical stuff with some research as well. So, yeah, it, it's um, it's definitely it's definitely good for people who are thinking that sort of way. Nice. So we've got three minutes left. So Robin, <laughs> um, uh, your turn about problem-based learning. Yeah, so I think it's kind of like the opposite, I guess, but. I think problem-based learning definitely suits people who are more um, social. So you like like the idea of um, meeting patients. Like I'd say the emphasis is on being more of a um, communicator and like a doctor who's better at. So other than if you're really into science, I'd say I guess tradition was better. But it, this course is is much more um, focused on like you always feel like you're being a doctor almost. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. So throughout your it's like teaching you to like look at symptoms and because it's like you see we learn about the symptoms or something and then directly after what causes that I feel like you get the mentality of being able to um, look at someone and start diagnosing and start um, thinking about what could be happening like inside them because you've so closely linked the learning and um, I do think it helps like confidence definitely because we're constantly um, being put in situations where you've got to sort of be a professional and like um, talk to people and that aspect of it so yeah it's much less emphasis on we still like l essentially end up learning the sciences and mm. the disease and all of that but it's done um, much more within like a social communication kind of thing and how you it kind of treats you like how you would act if you knew everything so I'm like, oh, I'd know how I'd diagnose someone if they had this specific thing, and then you're like building it up over time. So if that sounds like something that would suit someone, then I definitely, it's different from A-level for sure. Um, it's more teamwork and, yeah. In a, in a strange way, uh, I think for me, the PBL sounds more similar to like how my degree is, like chemistry, because it's, it's, I know we don't do any essays, but it's always problem-based learning um, that you're always solving problems. But um, yeah, no, they're, they're both, yeah, they're both so different. Um, sounds like it's a big decision for upcoming students um, to make. But um, that's all that we've got time for today. I hope this uh, episode was useful um, for upcoming medics. Um, I know I learned loads. Um, yeah, and if you're not following us at the moment, uh, we're at, at Oxford from the inside on. Instagram and our link tree will show you all the other links to Spotify, YouTube, etc. Made by our lovely interviewer, uh, Janaid. Um, thanks guys for coming um, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. See ya.